The Guardian is at Ad Week New York and I'm speaking to Jimmy Maiman, Chief Executive of Huffington Post. So Jimmy, you've been CEO for almost a year now, nine months or so. Um, tell me, how's it going? Where have you achieved on your plan? Um, good question and thank you for having me. Uh, when I came on, one of the things we looked at was how can we, how can we expand uh, faster? You know, to really take the brand and make it into a global one. And, and what was the pillars that we wanted to stand on? And obviously I came with a video background, so kind of finding out what HuffPost um, you know, how HuffPost was going to get into that space uh, was an important one and uh, obviously have, uh, have uh, led into HuffPost the live, uh, which, which right now we've actually uh, been doing for a year. It's just had its first, first anniversary. Uh, we're doing 12 hours a day, uh, five days a week. Uh, and so exactly what is that? Because I was going to ask you about video strategy given Go Viral was yeah. the company AOL took over where you came from. Yes. Uh, because uh, we interviewed Jonah Peretti the other day and there's been a lot of talk about native advertising, video content, cats on skateboards. Yes. So with your background, tell me a little bit more about that. Where, what's HuffPost's video strategy? You no, know, HuffPost, uh, I think obviously our, our big bet is that you know things are converging and, and we think that HuffPost as a global media company, which is where we want to be, needs to have uh, video or you know, TV-like proposition, which is which is why we've gone massively into that with 12 hours every day. We have a team of almost 100 people focusing just on that. Uh, and this, the interesting thing is, it doesn't only become you know a live experience; it also becomes something that allows us to create a better product. Because every month uh, we do uh, cut downs of our 25-minute segments down to two-minute segments. Uh, and, and have a new library of 5,000 new video clips that we can populate on the site. So suddenly our editors will have you know, better, more relevant video that they can put next to their articles, which we've seen has driven better engagement on our pages, and in turn also better monetization. So HuffPost Live is a twofold thing. We believe that people want to have a conversation. We believe that the internet can offer you know, that to dial people into a conversation, just like they can have a conversation on HuffPost. And that's also what we're doing with HuffPost Live, you know, dialing people into the conversation, using, using Google Hangout or Skype to kind of have people contribute, take part. We've had more than 10,000 people joining that conversation as we've kind of done programming over the last year. And obviously, as you mentioned, you can make quite a bit more money running ads around video. So I assume is it becoming a significant revenue stream now? Yes, video is, is of course uh, one of the ways, uh, as you said, you know, CPM, uh, CPMs in video is, is more interesting than uh, CPM in traditional banner ads. Uh, so video is, is, a, is an important part. Uh, as you mentioned, you talked with Jonah about the native. Native is of course also a very important part of what we do. Uh, we've, uh, we've just uh, a couple of months ago actually uh, re-engined our offering here in the US and have launched what we call HuffPost Partner Studio. And the reason why we've done that is that, you know, Video and native, uh, everyone knows these are the buzzwords out there, but they don't really know kind of how to get into it, how you're doing native, because native is something that's much more handheld. You need to create content. You need to create quite a bit of content to keep it alive. And a lot of brands or advertisers don't have the teams to do that. So HuffPost Partner Studio is actually a team, both a, a strategic and an editorial team on the business side that can help brands, you know, bring that dream alive and, and you know, that's why native is becoming increasingly important also as a revenue stream. And in terms of, I'm interested about the competitive set as well, Mail Online, we seem to be writing about them all the time and their rise in the US and the pounding you know, journos and money left, right and center into growing the brand. Do, they, do you see them in a, as a competitor? Like where do you, because you sort of cover a, a broad range of editorial. Um, do you worry about Mail Online? You know, I, I don't worry about them. I think what they do, you know, as you said, they've had uh, a great growth. They've, they've done way, they've done well. But I think uh, for us, you know, the way I see us is we are hybrid. We are hybrid between the social companies, you know, the Twitter, the Facebooks, the LinkedIn's, and the traditional news companies, the Guardian, news, uh, New York Times, those kind of uh, companies, because we combine those two things, right? Our, we're not just a news site. We are, uh, we are community. We are, you know, a commenting platform. We have, you know, if, if you look at our platform, we have had more than 300 million comments since we started. We have more than 90 million social, refer 19 million social referrers on a monthly basis. If you compare that with any other news site out there, uh, there'll be one tenth or one twentieth of, of, of that number. So I think that's that's kind of where we distinguish ourselves, and that's our USP. Obviously, the other guys are catching up, so we need to keep innovating. 
I was uh, interviewing Mark Thompson in the New York Times uh, and uh, we were discussing stories and scoops and, and he said, well, if, if you want to speak to the world, you still come to the New York Times. I thought to myself, I don't know if everyone would agree with that because you would consider yourself to be quite a global network. I, I think we're, we're getting there. Obviously, we have launched now eight international editions uh, and are launching uh, uh, Germany uh, October 10th. We're launching Brazil end of the year, which actually brings us uh, you know, to 10 editions and actually being truly, truly global because then we have an edition in all major continents. So I think uh, if you look at what he's doing and what traditional newspapers are doing is obviously they're trying to find a way of consolidating the existing business uh, and also closing news desks internationally, whereas we are expanding internationally and uh, you know, we're building businesses in those local markets that needs to be sustainable, viable businesses. But at the same time, I have 15 people in Rome, so when the Pope resigns, I have 15 people that can report that and share it with our US edition, with our other editions, which of course improves the quality of my product. So our international strategy is also twofold. It's kind of like, it's important to have strong uh, businesses in the local market, but it also becomes you know, news desks and I think you know, over time, people realize that we have something very interesting to offer uh, at, from an international standpoint. Now just lastly, this might be the idiot question, but just lastly, I haven't looked through AOL's numbers in, in quite a while. Um, is, is HuffPo broken out? Are you profitable? We, we, HuffPost, uh, as a standalone, will get to break even point this year, and then we, we are uh, you know, on a very good track. And, and you have to keep in mind, this is factoring in that we are investing in international. We are investing heavily in video with HuffPost Live, where, as I said, we've hired 100 people. So we are on a very good path. Our core business, the US business, before we started to expand, was a profitable one, and we, we at, know. At the point of acquisition, or? Yeah, the, yeah at right. the point of acquisition, and before we started to add these, all these international additions. So obviously, we have a starting point, we have a healthy platform. We know that as we're growing these things out, will be a quite profitable venture. It, the model is working, and which is why we keep scaling it. Otherwise, I don't think AOL would would keep uh, putting money into us opening international editions. Exactly. Canada has been live two years now, it's breaking even. Uh, UK is making money this year, our UK edition. So the editions that has been live more than two years is actually making money for us now. So the UK's broken even? Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Okay, Jimmy, thank you very much for your time. I know you've got to run. Thank, thank you, you very much.